This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the place to learn Flutter and upgrade your skills as a Flutter developer. With the latest update on Flutter that supports iOS 14, Android 11, updated cappuccino icons, app clip support, easier button widget, new internalization and localization support, new navigator and third there is one underrated update that I think is really important, which is the app analysis size tool. So why should you care about app size? Does size really matter? No matter what people say, app size does matter. In an article by the Google Play Store team, they found out that 70% of people in the emerging markets consider the size of the app before downloading it out of concerns of data, cost, and phone storage space. Moreover, they found out that for every 6 megabytes of app increase size in the APK file, there is a decrease in the install conversion rate of 1%. So if you were to increase to 60 megabytes, then the chances of people who are going to download decreases by 10%. This means that users are using the app size as a factor whether they want to download your app. So once an interested user presses on the install button, the download begins. And that's another set of problems. In the same article, the Google Play Store team found out that the download completion rates of an app with an APK size of 10 megabytes is 30% higher than an app with the APK size of 100 megabytes. So now if you are convinced that a small app size helps in the download and installation conversion rate, I am going to show you on how to see how big your app size is by using the new Flutter app size analysis tool and three ways for you to reduce your app size in the later part of this video. So let's get started by knowing on how big our app size is using the size analysis tool. All right, so let's open up a Flutter project that you have in your favorite IDE. Mine is obviously Visual Studio Code. And let's go to the documentation of how we are going to use the app analysis size tool. I will leave the link of this documentation in the description down below. So under the breaking down the size header, you could see that there is the different Flutter builds that you have. So this depends on the platform you are building. So you'll probably choose a platform that you're building and then you will pass in the analyze size flag when you're building. So I'm going to build an APK. So let's go back to our VS code inside our terminal tab. And then we can type in flutter build. And then I'm going to put in the APK. And then we can type in dash dash analyze dash size. And if you were to press enter, you can see there is an error because you need to specify an Android ARM or type that you want to build. So for me, I want to build an Android ARM64. So let me press the up arrow key and then I will just copy this target platform flag, paste it over here. And then I will just copy this Android ARM64. So this depends on which Android platform you're going to build. And then I press enter. So now let's wait for a while. So I have a little joke. Why do programmers love to use the dark mode? Because if you were to choose the light mode, you will attract bugs. Get it? <laughs> I'm so hilarious. <laughs> so once it's successfully run, you'll see a high level summary of the size breakdown in the terminal. And you could see that the app release.apk is a total of 6 megabytes. So through this summary, you can get a quick idea of the size usage per category such as asset or native code or Flutter libraries. The compiled dot native library is further breakdown by package for a quick analysis, something like this. If you want to have a deeper dive and visual representation of what your different packages looks like, it will look something like this. So we need to open up our Dart dev tool. So in order for us to open up the Dart dev tools, we need to run a debug session in our Flutter project. 
So let's go back to our VS Code or IDE and let's run our Flutter project. Alright, so once you run your Flutter project, you can open up the command prompt menu. So you can press command shift P and then you can type in Dart Open Dev Tools and then you can click on this and this will open up all of the different options. So sometimes it will open up like this and if it does, what you can do is if you were to go to this app size tooling, you can just click on this open app size tool. If it opens the Dart Dev tool successfully, at the top right hand corner, there is this app size tab. So click on this and then you will see this drag and drop an AOT snapshot or size analysis file for debugging. So we need to drag our size analysis file that has been created earlier. So where can you find this size analysis file? Inside your Flutter project under your build folder, you could see this thing called apk code size analysis underscore 01.json. So we're going to drag this file inside our dot dev tools. So inside your Flutter project, inside your build folder, you could see this apk code size analysis underscore one dot json. Now you could just drag into the flutter.dev tool and then you can see the name of the file that you have dragged in. So let's click on this analyze size and there you go. So it has successfully analyzed the different sizes of your packages in rectangle. So what we are going to do is we're going to find our source of our project which is usually the name of our project. So the project that I have is a learn flutter app. So I want to see all of my code in rectangles. So let's click on this ARM64. So what you can do is you can click on the different rectangles. You can click on the package flutter. And then if you want to go back to the previous package that you were in. So above these rectangles, you can see these breadcrumbs. So what you can do is you can click on the previous file. So let's click on the libapp.so. You can see this the SRC folder. And then you have the different dot packages that we have over here. So at the bottom of these rectangles, you can see there is two windows, the library or class window and the dominator tree window. So under the library or class window, it basically shows the different size and the percentage of the total size of the different packages that you have. So for example, if I were to go to the package learn Flutter app, you could see that it only takes in 19.1 kilobytes, which is only 0.23% of the total size of the app. And this library or class window represent what you have currently over here. So if I were to click SRC, you could see that it opens up the package Flutter SRC, and then it has all the different files and code inside it. Now, the next thing I want to show is this thing called the dominator tree. So what this dominator tree is, it shows the packages that are depending on another package. So example inside this learn flutter package, it depends on the provider package, the nested package, the Google fonts package. So if you were to see this arrow and this will open up the packages that this Google fonts depends. So this Google font depends on the path provider package and the HTTP package. And then if I were to open up the path provider package, you can see that there are different packages underneath and then you can just go on the rabbit hole. But yeah. So the next thing is you can see this show call graph with a toggle. So let's click on this. So this show call graph shows a similar information of the dominator tree. However, instead of one to many relationships, for example, like this, so one to many, there's a lot. But for a show called graph, it's actually a many to many relationship. So for example, if I were to click on the path provider, so the nested package is depending on the provider package, which also depends on the nested package. And then you can see the learn Flutter app is depending on the package provider, which is depending on the Flutter package. So if you were to have a background of SQL database or relationship database, then you probably understand what this means. If you want more information, there is a link in the description of what the dominator tree is and then also what the call graph is. So now you know how big your app size is. Now I'm going to share with you three ways for you to reduce the app size. 
So the first way is to remove any unused resources. So what I mean by resources? Well, if you have packages that you don't use, for example, Google Fonts, or you have images that you don't use, or even files that you don't use or that's redundant, then I would highly recommend you to delete it. Secondly, minimize resources from imported libraries. So a library that I think a lot of us have been using is Firestore. Instead of using the Firestore package in every single file to call in a very simple function of Firestore, why not collate all of the same or similar functions into one file so that it will only import it into that file and then you can just spread the word across your app file structure. Lastly, compress your JPEG and PNG images. I know these images are very good looking and looks pretty, but sometimes it's actually very, very big, megabytes big. So what you can do is you can go to a simple compressor. I think you can Google search it. There's many out there. And then you can reduce it as small as possible so that it doesn't bloat up your app side. Another way for you to do it is, first of all, you can convert these images into WebP. So this is a very small format for images, but still gives you high quality. And the best recommendation that I will give to you is if you were to have images that are vectors based, then use SVG. This is the best way for you to show those vector images that has been created. But if you want a very simple solution, what you can do is actually make that image after you compress it and then you host it inside a cloud-based solution. Maybe you can use Firebase Storage, you never know. And then you can use the URL that has been created once you store it inside a cloud Firebase Storage. And then you will just render it when a user opens up, for example, the app. So your app doesn't contain any images and it just renders it from the URLs that you have. So if you want more ways for you to reduce your app size, leave in the comments down below. Maybe I will create a video more about it to reduce your app size. In summary, we learned that to increase the chances to have more users for your Flutter app, you will need a small size app, preferably less than 100 megabytes. And to know what your app size is, you can use the new Flutter app analysis size tool. And lastly, we learned how to reduce our app size by removing any unused resources, minimizing resources imported from libraries and compressing the images files or using a different type of image file. All right, before I end this video, I wanted to share with you that I have created a very lighthearted and funny kind of newsletter to summarize weekly on the different updates in the Flutter ecosystem. So one of the topics that I have inside the newsletter is about app size and how the analysis tool is pretty underrated. And at the same time, I will share different things that I think is interesting. So I also will add some dart quizzes for you to think about and maybe increase in the knowledge of programming. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down on any updates you want me to go through next. There are tons of videos by other creators or Flutter content creators that they have created and you can check them out. I'll put in the videos link in the description or on the top right hand corner. So that's about it. Stay safe, wear a mask and all the best. Bye bye.